Hi, Rosie. Hi, Tessie. So, so nice to be connected <laughs> with you at um, Zoom o'clock. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. I'll do anything for you. Oh, well, the same, the same. <laughs> So for the people who don't know Rosie yet, Rosie is a dear friend, a recent friend that I met at the Every Woman Gala in London, where I'm an ambassador as well. And Rosie was sitting next to me. She is an absolute powerhouse, works on so many different projects, which I will let her tell about it. But that as well, she's a mother and she is the chief editor of the Hello magazine in the UK, which we all know and we all love. So Rosie, over to you. Tell us a bit about you. How does one get into becoming the chief editor of Hello magazine? And how <laughs> is that to be actually the chief editor? What are the responsibilities? What is your day to day um, with the magazine? Thanks, Tessie. Um, well, gosh, I have been at Hello Magazine now for over 12 years, which I can't quite believe. Um, we're a weekly magazine. I haven't actually worked out how many issues that is, but it's a lot of issues. <laughs> and obviously in that time, the magazine and the brand has changed enormously. You know, we've gone from um, a media company that was very focused on our print weekly magazine to a multi-platform media business um, accessible to our audience sort of 24 hours seven days a week we have a huge digital operation as well as our beloved weekly magazine which is still very strong on the newsstand and um, we'll come on to sort of how we've adapted a bit during this um, whole lockdown um, and the challenges that we have at the moment um, but we also have a monthly fashion magazine and my role now has obviously developed in that time. I used to edit the weekly magazine and now I oversee the brand from an editorial perspective. So I'm almost kind of guardian of our ethos and our tone and our content. Um, I've worked in women's glossy magazines for a long time, for over 20 years. Um, I've worked at other monthly titles, including Red Magazine, Glamour Magazine, uh, big brands. Um, I was at Grazia magazine when that launched for a couple of years before I came to Hello. Um, so I've always had a love of journalism, a love of women's magazines and the need for them in our lives to inform, but also to entertain. You know, I think you, can, you should never underestimate the importance of entertainment. Um, and especially at a time like this at Hello, we're very focused on our um, tone and approach in uplifting our audience. I'm very, very proud and protective of our positivity, of our kindness. Um, we've spent, you know, over 30 years at Hello building trusted relationships with all the people that we feature on our pages. Uh, and that is because, you know, they, they trust the approach that we'll take. It doesn't mean to say we don't ask our subjects often difficult questions or ta tackle emotional or difficult subjects with them, but we do it in a kind and positive and trusting environment. And that is something, you know, that's, that's you know, instill in every member of staff and that, you know, we really keep um, close to our heart and everything we do. And so at this moment in time, I feel that Hello is an essential read. You know, we really, we're bombarded with hard news obviously it's an extremely challenging and difficult time for a whole number of people around the world and I feel that um, Hello has a real part to play in the media in the British media here um, in providing an outlet and an escape from all of that um, so we have introduced a number of new franchises into the magazine we have Hello Good News every week which is coronavirus free news from around the world so really uplifting stories um, from around the world. Um, we have um, built on our franchise, Hello to Kindness, which is a campaign that we launched in the magazine a year and a half ago. We initially launched the Hello to Kindness campaign in response to a lot of negativity that we were seeing online. And a lot of it was being aimed at the Duchess of Cambridge and the Duchess of Sussex. Um, especially on social media channels, you know, people from either camp, you know, writing abusive comments and some of them really nasty, bullying, um, racist, sexist behavior, this kind of pitting two women against each other, which was just outrageous. And we didn't want members of our team spending a disproportionate amount of their time sort of policing these negative comments blocking users, deleting comments. It felt really negative and it didn't have a place in the community that we've created online. 
So we launched our campaign to make a stand, to ask people to think twice before you post, to not write things about people in an online world that you wouldn't say to them if you passed them in the street. Um, and just to be a little more cautious in, in the words that were, that were being written. Um, and the campaign, you know, took off enormously. I mean, it turned into a movement, really. It featured on the news all around the world, um, got a lot of attention and support from some leading figureheads and celebrities. So we continued this campaign and really it underpins everything that we do at Hello Anyway, because we are so proud of our kind stance. Um, you know, kindness is a strength. It's a superpower. You know, it's not anything that should be seen as a soft touch. Um, so we continued this campaign. And now again, once again, we find ourselves in a moment where kindness is even, you know, is extremely important and kindness towards one another in our family homes. You know, we're all dealing with a very sort of intense relationship with family members at the moment. Um, kindness in our communities. We're all staying at home to protect our wider communities. Kindness to our planet even as well. You know, we're already seeing some benefits to our planet, you know, that this difficult time is actually, you know, helping to kind of restore um, some environmental, long-term environmental issues that we have. So kindness really sort of encompasses everything going on at the moment. And we thought it would be really nice to use our pages of our magazine and also our online channels to champion some real stories of kindness that have come out of this difficult time in the hope that we can look back on it and yes mourn the you know the terrible loss of life that we've seen and the difficulties people have gone through but actually remember the glimmers of hope you know the moments of opportunity and you know heartwarming sort of brilliance out of you know a very difficult situation so kindness kind of underpins everything that we do and obviously we're all working from home at the moment, creating our homemade hello <laughs> from our bedrooms and home offices and kitchen tables. And say for a few IT hitches, it, it's going okay. And we feel really dedicated that we need, you know, we have a service to provide here and that we want to be on the newsstand um, in supermarkets and delivered to people's homes, you know, every single week. So we're really, really focused on that, which is great. Um, I mentioned to you as well my writing of novels as well. I'm a novelist too. I've, I've just finished my third novel. So I'm on a slight writerly high at the moment because it's taken me over three years to write this book. And, um, and I sort of finally finished some of my edits this week. And actually writing for me has been a real creative outlet. I really love doing it. My role at Hello has got obviously further removed from the writing side. Um, and I miss it. I'm a journalist and, and a writer at heart. So I really enjoyed losing myself in novel writing. Um, yeah, so that's, that's been a nice sort of outlet for me, alongside the crazy juggling of two young children. <laughs> so I'm a mother of two. I have two children aged six and four, which is pretty hectic, um, who are, yeah, having sort of a little bit of homeschooling, but spending most of their time on the trampoline in the back garden. <laughs> And really, you know, trying to remember the things that I can feel very grateful for, which at the moment are very simple things like having a healthy family, having some outside space that we can go into, appreciating the sun in the sky um, and, you know, and my, and my own health and, and well-being, really. So I hope that's enough of a little overview. Wow, that is you're just impressive and I totally totally resonate with everything you're saying specifically well um, there, there's a few things so one you wrote a beautiful feature about me on in Hello mm. Day, um, yes. last year which I really appreciated and I had that glamorous photo shooting and I just yeah, love cool. working Thank together you. with the Hello UK team because they're just incredibly capable professional fun and it was just really, 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 really wonderful. Um, so that was one. Two, when you're talking about kindness, um, I think as we discussed already before offline, kindness is a choice, as you said. Mm. So um, I think that's really powerful to say that, that it is a choice. Um, as you said before to me, um, it's about, you know, you can go either way, left or right, kindness mm. or kind. So it's mm -hmm. said, a superpower, but it's a conscious decision. And I think that is what people need to understand, that it is something you are responsible for it happening. Yeah. 
it doesn't happen yeah like that. no it doesn't and it is a learned behavior you know we can change people that might not have always acted in the most kind way you know throughout their lives to kind of have a realization that you can you know make that decision to be a kinder person yeah instead of walking one way down the street go the other way you know go the extra mile because you never know what is going on in somebody's life at any given time and if you are kind to everybody then you don't have that concern you know it, it's gone away you can only do good and um, people's behaviors as we know are affected by you know often sort of deep-rooted feelings but a whole load of external things that are going on in their life you know that we can't control but we can control our behavior to that person 100 percent, and um yeah well i think we have a lot of projects already in our minds to mm -hmm. amplify the message of kindness mm -hmm. and you are really really the forerunner of it with your magazine uh, hello magazine uk so I can imagine how Hello Magazine is run pre-corona because people can imagine how it is. But so during corona, you all on lockdown, you're saying mm -hmm. you launched a new initiative with Hello Magazine. Yes. What is this all about and how do you, how do you get it done? Mm. Well, we've got several new strands to the magazine. You know, we've had to reinvent it. If you think our page is normally a full of royal engagements, fabulous parties, photo shoots, you know, all things that involve people coming together and doing something, you know, in, in person. So with all of that gone, we've had to think really carefully about what we fill our pages with. And because we know our, you know, our unique selling point, our USP is so clear in that we are there to entertain, to uplift, to bring kindness and positivity. We started to sort of build our ideas around those kind of pillars. So, you know, as I, I said at the beginning, never underestimate the power of light entertainment. I think people need some escapism. So we've introduced short stories to the magazines. We've got leading um, authors writing a short story each week, which you might sit down on your sofa and have a cup of tea and take 15 minutes to read that story and be transported. Um, we have reintroduced puzzles to the magazine, which is actually something we haven't had on our pages for about 20 years. Um, so how do you do that again, with puzzles? How do you do it with the puzzles? Puzzles, yeah. So puzzles that you simply fill out, you know, like you would do a crossword ah. and things like that. Yeah, so really going back to kind of basics in a way. There's something about this time though that has made me feel quite nostalgic. I've been like playing some old music recently. So I've been albums that I hadn't really listened to since I was sort of in my late teens and twenties. It's making me feel, I think it makes you feel comforted, you know, when there's a lot of anxiety about the world, the wider world out there, we can at least make our small world, which is our homes and our families at the moment, feel comforting and safe. And a lot of that goes back to um, nostalgia and perhaps, you know, moments from our own childhood. I've certainly been playing a lot of games with my children as well that I hadn't played for years or reading them books that I remembered from my childhood. My mum and dad actually have been doing some video um, storytelling with the boys, reading books that uh, they had kept, you know, from the childhoods of me and, and my siblings, which has been lovely. So, you know, we've brought a bit of that into the magazine too with our puzzle section and the kindness. And of course, you know, we are reporting on royal news. The royals are doing a lot. And I think, you know, in a time of crisis, certainly our own queen and royal families, the, the nation looks to her for a sense of stability and for comfort uh, that's, you know, apolitical. Uh, I thought her speech um, a couple of weeks ago was just incredible when she used the, you know, the famous Vera Lynn words, we will meet again. And it was such a powerful thing to say. And it's true. And we have to keep hold of that hope that this is a period in time. This too shall pass. It really will. But perhaps there are some learnings, you know, that we may then take with us into our future lives. And that will be really important as well. And I think the slowing down, the sort of less noise, taking time to consider. Well, I don't know about less noise, actually, in this house with two young boys. But uh, <laughs> less noise in our day to day, um, less running about frantically, you know, perhaps thinking about what truly fulfills us as an individual and continuing down that path. So I think it's going to be a time of change for some people. Yeah, 
I totally agree with you. Also here for me with the kids, you know, it's just, mm. you know, well, the kids are with me all the time, but it's just having them 24 seven again, like the last time I had them 24 seven was when mm. they were babies. Yeah. So, uh, because then now they're in school, right? But now that they're home and I homeschool them and they're teenagers, I think yeah. I, it's a, almost an opportunity for me as a mother to rediscover the new, the, 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 the teeny versions of my kids of who mm -hmm. have they become now. Because yes, when I see them and we hang out and everything, it's great. And I know my kids inside out, but just spending so much time with them, I really get to know them in a way which it's just indescribably mm -hmm. beautiful. And I really take that as an opportunity, you know, just to yeah. really glue that as a family. And I think that is kind of like nature giving us that opportunity. Mm -hmm. It is. Exactly. Yeah. Reconnect us, reconnect to the kids and do something that we would have not ever have done otherwise. Mm -hmm. because now we have kind of more time to do that. And likewise, our children will benefit too, you know, from that undivided attention. You yeah. know, we're always sort of, there seems to be a lot of rushing, certainly in this household of, you know, getting from one place to another, being ready to go out the door for work, rushing back, um, you know, and the fact that we've just got a bit more time, you know, it's still busy, <laughs> you know, rushing to my desk at work and kind of doing things, but at least we're all in the house. You know, when I when I came down for lunch today, because um, my yeah, we're all kind of tag teaming, looking after the children. The boys, you know, I had a jump on them, a jump on the trampoline with them, mm -hmm. um, and it was just so nice uh, to to just to have that bit of time, the laughing and the kind of falling on top of each other on the trampoline was just a great little break from work, and you know, that's so lucky. I think we're going to see how our children have grown during this period of time as well. Oh. 100%. Well, our time has sadly already run out. Oh. So I know it's just so much fun to talk to you. Um, yeah, so a last few words from you, dear Rosie, to the world, an anecdote, a poem, just something you want to share that is dear to you. Mm. Well, I think probably it would be about kindness and just being the person that is kind, being proud of it, making the decision to take the kind option. You know, it is a choice and it will make amazing things happen in your life. It will make the responses that you get from the universe, you know, even more positive and in your favor. So just always be kind, I think. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Rosie. Thank you for your time. I'm sure Thank people you. will hook you up and I want to read these books and <laughs> yes, I'll send them to you. Thank, oh, you. Thanks, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.